Well, good day, too. So how's she going? Pretty good here. So we're just looking at the pad here. <clears throat> it's looking good, but we do have a low spot right there. You can see where the water's laying. And uh, I don't know what it was here. This was a weird spot. If you watch the video of us pouring this and troweling it, it took forever for this little spot here for some reason to cure up, dry up. I don't know why. The rest of it come up pretty good. We're actually a bit high in the middle here. You can't really feel it when you walk over it, but I see the strings now. It's got strings on here. Uh, we're down about three quarters of an inch over there, but you can see where the water's lying. But you know, once we get the building on this, it should be should be good. <clears throat> Shouldn't make a huge huge difference. But uh, anyway, so what I've been working on here is uh, before we take these forms off, I want to give this a saw cut. We have to go rebuild our saw here today. That saw, but I uh, got some screws in there and. Uh, the black lines are actually the eight feet from the corner. So that's actually where I'm gonna be cutting. <coughs> I could have used, <coughs> oh, still sick here. I could have used um, just a chalk line, boom! And I cut the chalk line, but I thought, well, you know what? You're gonna get crap on that line. You might not see it. This, at least, as long as I don't hit it with a saw, I can just kind of follow roughly an inch, you know, away and then just cut. You just need to bet them so, you know, if you get this side really frozen, it's gonna lift at all, which it probably will. It'll go into that expansion joint and kind of close the joint up a bit until it thaws out again. It's probably gonna do that in here, but uh, so we've got another line here. This is basically just tied there, looped here, that there, and then over. I did eight feet, eight, eight, and then the rest. <clears throat> Could have split it up, but eight should be lots. And then over here, of course, we've got from this corner, eight feet, another eight feet, and then eight feet, eight feet. Now. We're pretty close from this end to this end for the same distance, but this way for some reason didn't come out right. Um, I don't know what happened there. I've got under 24 feet here and uh, not quite as bad on this corner. So we're a bit short in this corner. And I, I'm not sure why, but I think from what I can see, it looks kind of like this form tilted on me a little bit in. I mean, can't do anything about it now, so. But anyways, I gotta gotta saw cut this. So I'm gonna have to do one, two, and then three, and then four, and that should give it lots of flexibility. Um anyways, we gotta get in here and get this saw rebuilt. So uh I just kind of put her in this basket case for now. So let's uh get her all out of here and uh look at that, she's rebuilt. That was the fastest rebuild on the planet. I uh, priced I priced out the parts for this, and they were all good, and I would have done it until I got to the flywheel. Holy! So, as you guys know, when I took this apart, I kind of did it wrong. Apparently, I always do everything wrong. That's what just keeps you guys interested, I guess. Um, but anyways, she happened. Not much I can do about it now. The damage is done. Where is the fly? Way down here. So all the nuts and screws and stuff are in there. So I should have taken this off first, but what I did is I held this while I took off the uh, clutch and stuff there, and this little wee tiny little key down there that's supposed to key onto the crankshaft just snapped like that. Well, this little part here, I priced this from my guys at John Deere, because um, this is a, a two-wire, two-wire, um, coil on it, or two two bolts, sorry, one, two, and then sometimes they had a third down here. That's a two bolt coil. Apparently that's the newer version. The older ones are the three bolt. And uh, this little flywheel was worth more than what I paid for the whole saw. So I, uh, if I ever come across another one, I might see if I can just rob a flywheel off it. Um, this guy down where I got this from, this was just like, you know, a little fun project, basically. I kind of just wanted to tear it apart and, uh, you know, kind of see what it needed. Well, when I seen the bearings were bad, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really want to get that far. And if it was only a piston and cylinder, okay, that would have been all right. Not too bad. I can tear that apart do that. But now you're getting into bearings and uh, this uh, crankcase, I didn't even get it any further apart. The bolts are out of it, but you really got to almost heat these up a bit so things will expand a little bit and then they come off a little nicer. I'm like, mm, 
I don't know if I really want to get into that, but this thing, I don't think the bearings failed initially. I think it was, if I remember right, you know what, I gotta leave this little box open, let it dry out, because all those stuff's gonna rust in there like crazy, because it's, it was outside this little screw box here, and uh, let's let her dry up. Um, this thing, I think, had, because there's mucky crap down the inside of where the fly would have been, I kind of think the base gasket was leaking down in there, and that's the, the gasket that comes out here. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but something got it all mucky down there. That could have been a seal too. The seal might have gone bad on the uh, crankshaft side here. So you know what? Stupid thing was, I went ahead and ordered the piston and cylinder for it before I tore it apart. <laughs> and so now I got a new piston and cylinder for it, not a genuine uh, still or steel, whatever you want to pronounce it. But uh, it's, uh, it was an Amazon one, so I paid like 60 bucks for the, for the piston cylinder, and then I got the kit for all this crap too, for the filters and stuff, right? But uh, the uh, flywheel was over $175 just for that, so I'm like, nah, I, don't, yeah, I don't think I want to spend that on that. Now, mind you, the new saw was considerably more than that, but uh, I think this would be a little handy tool for even me for winter time. If I got to, you know, dig a frosty one, we'll say. And I could maybe get the diamond blade on there and cut the ground open. And then it just would be a lot easier just to rip that chunk out of that instead of trying to bust the whole thing, right? It's pretty hard on that tractor. So a lot of that nice, probably $300 flywheel in there. I don't know if you can see it, but anyways. So that is uh, the blade that come on it. Mm. Oh yeah, so there's the bag of stuff. So this we're just gonna maybe put on a back burner for right now. If I can get up another machine that's got a decent flywheel, that's not that expensive. We'll maybe rebuild that at some point, especially when I get a, a better hand too. So that's a little kit that come with it. And this is a, a 410. So it's actually one model up from that one that we have in the box here. So 410 and... That little blade wouldn't last too long, so I went and got a, another Amazon special. Ugh, I'm gonna put you on a tripod here so I can kind of have a hand and a half. Okay, a hand and a half. So, this is a diamond blade. It's supposed to last a lot longer than these abrasive ones. These abrasive ones are kind of garbage, but um, when I worked at the rental there, we used to sell boxes and boxes and boxes of those abrasive blades. Man, that was kind of a Real pain in the rear end to stock all that crap. Boxes of these things, just, you know, dozens and dozens of boxes of these things stuff. Coming and going all the time. And we uh, kind of got into the diamond blades at that point too, and then they were really expensive, like $350 for a diamond blade, you know, it's like, holy smokes. So, uh, you might recognize this company. I didn't get this for free from Evolution, but I think if I would have asked the guys, they might have sent me something to try, but this is from Evolution, and oh boy, it's hard to read that on there. It's for uh, reinforced concrete, looks like clay tiles, brick, and stone. So we're going to slap this guy, and I don't think I'm going to cut today. Um, I'm going to have to do it, well the light's not too bad yet, but it goes down so bloody fast here. And I uh, kind of should do it when the neighbor's maybe not home. <laughs> That would be kind of nicer for her, maybe, but I don't really honestly know if I can get this stupid frickin' package open here. One-handedly, I might have to uh, cut her here. Uh, make sure you guys aren't zoomed in this time, like the last time, because that wasn't so good. So Evolution, yeah, they're the ones that sent me that uh, compound miter chop saw thing and the stand. Super nice of them. But, uh, oh, and he sent me, uh, he sent me, I think, just the one blade that came on it, and then I said, I, I was using it, and I said, you know what, that really didn't last for too long, supposedly cutting metal and stuff. He's like, oh, well, I'll send you some more. So they sent me, like, another three of the blades for that thing. I'm like, holy smokes, thanks, man. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Peanuts to them, I suppose, but, oh, you know what, this is pinched in the middle here, too. Okay. But yeah, Evolution is really good, so if you want to buy something from their website, put in Bill's T-Max 5 and you'll get 5% uh, off. That's a pretty sweet blade. It's heavier than I thought it was. 
Now, hopefully it'll fit on the saw. I see that arbor in the middle, and now I'm kind of wondering, it's supposed to... It might not fit this saw, and I'm thinking about it. This is for a 12-inch saw, 1-inch arbor. I don't know what this is here, 1 8 inch thick, maybe? Well, I guess we'll see if we can get this blade off of here. I don't know how I'm going to hold this. I don't think these things have a real lock thing on them. But uh, we'll see what we can do here. Move you back a hair a bit. All right, I already got a blade for this, or a, what do I call it for this thing? Excuse me. Uh, here should fit. Now, this is going to be interesting. Oh, it's not on there very tight anyways. Okay then, it'll be once you start cutting. We used to take dozens and dozens and dozens of these things off for people that rented a saw there and just kind of brought it back and left the blade on. They didn't want the blade. So I used to put all kinds of them on. Okay, so we got to make sure this is going the right way. There should be an arrow. I know I've seen an arrow somewhere. You know what? I don't think this is going to fit in. Nope. Wrong size, bud. Oh. Sometimes they come with... Darn it. Well, doesn't that suck? Sometimes they came with a little insert washer thing. But I don't think this one did, so that must be a... I don't think there's anything else in this package. Oh, man. Yeah, there's like a little washer. No, that's not the right size. So it's supposed to be 20 millimeters, I'm pretty sure. That's definitely not... Maybe I got shipped the wrong one. I don't know. Oh, man. This is more for like a floor saw or something. That is kind of confusing, though, because... 12 inch, 1 inch arbor. I'm sure when I looked online there, it had... Darn it. Well, we got a nice thing hanging on the wall. Maybe make a nice clock out of it. Well, doesn't that just suck? Where's my tape measure? No, oh, that's not my tape measure. Where did I put my tape measure? There. So... Yeah, this is 20 millimeter on this guy. Oh, man. Like a little bit bigger than three quarter inch. Don't make it easy for people, huh? Don't make it easy for people. That's right on an inch. Well, doesn't that just suck? It's a nice blade, though. Must say. Well, I guess I'll have to go find something else for it. Uh, maybe I can get a saw blade from the, uh, the place that we. Uh, rented the tools from. I think they were selling them there too. So. Well, I guess we're not doing any of that fun stuff today. Okay, let me have a look on line here first. Holy smokes, there's an Amazon Choice one. 12 inch segmented diamond saw blade for concrete, masonry, brick, stone for $9.49. I don't know how long that one would last, but you might be surprised. Holy, yeah, 20 inch arbor. One inch to 20 inch, see, see this one has the little, this thing, has, you know what, it might be just cheap to get this thing, just get the little circle thing that should fit the other blade here. So this little, this little ring in the middle here, I need that guy right there. You know what, I'm gonna order this thing. When, uh, when will they say it'll be here? Oh, wait a minute. No, that was... What was going on there? It wasn't $9. And f Look at this. $9.49. Is that not what that says right there? $9.49. And you go in here. And all of a sudden they have a 12-inch that's $42.99. What? So, yeah. See, you're going down 7-inch, 6-inch, 5-inch, 4-inch. So, that's kind of... Yeah, there it is. The 4-inch is $9.49. Oh, well, that's cheating. <laughs> How can they get away advertising like that? 
12 inches, $42.99. That's not terrible too bad. Well, maybe we'll have to order that to be in for Thursday. This is only Monday. Boy, that's not uh, <coughs> super fast. Let's see what else I got. Bosch, I might even just run down to Home, uh, home Depot here. They have a Makita blade, I think, down there. Let me look that up quick here. Yeah, that's it there. 90 bucks for that one, but it looks like it comes with a little ring too. Those should pop out of there. Yeah, so there it says they're one inch or 20 millimeters. 20 with the ring and then one inch without, so. Um, yeah, maybe I'll pop down and grab one of them. They have apparently six in stock here in Orangeville, so. And there we go. I guess this is as far as I can go with that right now. I will uh, grab a blade and then we'll see. Uh, See what we can get this thing, get the blade on here. I'll have to pop down and grab it. We'll be right on back. Oh, look at this. Old stalagmites from that old saw there from cutting metal. Huh. Nice. All right, we went and got a Makita blade. I was kind of hoping they might have just sold the little rings, but of course they don't. So um, I kind of thought after, I think I should have checked in the bag of stuff here. I don't think so. Mm. No, I don't think they. Uh, I don't think they include that. So that kind of sucks. No, I don't think so. Anyways, all right. We went and bought a blade. This was like a ninety dollar blade. It's not too bad. They're they're a lot cheaper than uh, than they used to be. But uh, anyways, this one's good for concrete, asphalt, block, and brick. So that's pretty good. That's really good, actually. Faster than turbo blade. Three times the life. 50% taller. I don't know what that means, but anyways. Well, looks like I got another fun one to open here. Oh, no, no, no. This one might... Well, well. No, didn't work so well. Oh, man. Ugh. Holy smokes. Brittle. This poor guy's been stuck in there for probably 10 years. So yeah, this little ring, we should be able to bash it open. I'll use this blade first. It looks to me like this will come out of here. So anyways, let's, let's at least get it on tonight and fire this thing up. And uh, we'll see how she works. Well, we're not gonna cut with it, but we'll start it up, run it. These blades sound really cool when they're uh, screaming real good. Kind of sounds like a turbo. <laughs> okay. So this, yeah, that should be the right way. There we go. Yeah, that should be the cutting way there. Okay. I'll give you some specs on this saw after here too. Let's uh, just get this guy on and tighten up. So the still TS410. It's basically the smallest one that they make now. He is uh I'm gonna get it. So this thing is 66.7 cc. Uh, weight is 9.5, no, 20.9 pounds. I'll do it converted for you guys. Uh, cutting wheel is 12 inch. That's this guy here. And uh, the next size, I went to the 420, you get a 14 inch, a little bit bigger. So, but uh, that'd be all right. You get a little bit more depth, like this is, it's 12 inch this way, but it's only really going to cut you basically to this ring. So you're only going to get like a four inch cut, which is plenty for what I'll be doing. I think the other one, if you went there, you'd get four, four and three quarter, four and a half, or maybe five or something like that. Uh, cutting wheel, you know, diameter, so yeah, that's about it for technical data. Features is uh, reduced emissions engine technology, two-stroke engine, 
with stratified charge fuel system layer of air is uh, created between the burn charge and the combustion chamber and the fresh charge in the crankcase reducing the amount of fuel loss during the charge cycle this results in more power with lower weight up to 20 percent lower fuel consumption than regular two-stroke engines and significantly reduced exhaust emissions uh, we'll see about that <laughs> Long life air filter system for cutoff machines. There's uh, like one, two, three pieces into that air filter system. It's kind of important, right? Anti vibration. It's got quite a you know spring set up here and rubber mounts and all this stuff. There's a gigantic, huge spring over here that you know it kind of all from the handle. Uh, so anti vibration, semi automatic V belt tensioning. So this guy is here, and you probably got to unloosen this little screw and then tighten it. Let's see, what does this say? Uh, extends belt, service lace, semi-automatic still. Uh, belt tensioning makes it easy for you to retension the drive belt. All you need is to adjust the adjusting screw and with your spark plug wrench. Can, yeah, so this guy. Uh, with your adjusting, so wait a minute, your spark plug wrench. Uh, consistent tension extends the service life of the belt and bearing. For more detailed information and retensioning, please refer to the operator's manual. So it'll be in the manual there. Decompression valve. It does, does it? Where? Where? Why not look at the actual book? Because these things actually have a lot of compression in them. I'm kind of surprised. There's got to be a little button thing somewhere here. I never uh, really looked it over. Super crazy close. Usually on the top of the cylinder, right? But I don't see anything sticking out of there. Decompression valve. The decompression valve allows some of the compression pressure in the cylinder to escape, so less force on the starter rope is needed. Interesting. I'm not too sure. We're going to have to... Let's get the manual out here and see what they tell us. Manual. Come on, man. You well. Instruction man, you well. Oh, I can't even twist my wrist enough there to hold this quite right. Okay, I'm going to do something else here. Down here, I guess. So I got another, another one of these. Every time you buy one, you seem to get another one, so that's all right. Uh, before starting. Imagine there'd be a picture showing you how to cut simple applications. I'm not seeing anything about a decompression valve. The uh, next model up though, I guess has the water system on it here so I can turn it on and off. Which I'm not sure if I'm going to use it on this or not. We'll see how dusty it is. If it's bad, I'll put the water on. Um, so the water will, of course, come through the little guy back there, and then up the hose, and then you got an on and off valve. Well, the next one up actually has a mixing thing here on the other side, which is kind of cool. So you can turn it on and off on there and uh, increase it or decrease the water, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of electronic water control. That sounds like something that would probably end up screwing up, but, uh, you know, with all this dust and crap on it. Uh, this is just all water stuff, recoil. Where's the starting procedure? There we are. Starting, fueling, starting, stopping the engine. So... Huh? Huh? Press the button 5 on the decompression valve. Or each starting procedure, which is showing me like here, but that's not a decompression, that's a screw. It's your spark plug under there. That doesn't make sense. Everything else looks the right. It's your throttle and your lock on, the choke. Press the button five. This doesn't seem to have that. It's just, it's this hard plastic cover. There's no decompression there. See, this is showing me something, I think, for a different saw. 
Versions with decompression valve. Yeah, so this one I don't think has one. So that's great. It's okay. They just usually start pretty good, so you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I want you to put your hand on it. I got to kind of do it a little differently because of my broken hand here, but I have to figure that out. Adjusting the carburetor. I'm going to take on Terrell's carburetor word, I think. It's kind of funny. So, yeah, well, okay. That's pretty well straightforward-ish. Clear as mud. So you got another little mighty steel screwdriver too. They're always handy. Now, before we start it up, I would like to actually examine the filtration system on here. I don't know if it'll let me open this up. Just to kind of see what it's all about. I'm hoping that these screws will stay in there. Oh, Ooh, that one seems really tight for some reason. I don't know if I like that sort of too much. Why is that so tight? Stripped right from factory. Hey, you never know. No, oh, they do come right out. Oh, I kind of wish they had uh, encapsulated things for this. Because that happens then. That's okay. We'll figure it out. And looks like we got two on the bottom here, too. My uh, skin on my hand has gotten all weird now, I guess, because I haven't been using that hand. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Okay, that should be free to come off. So that's just the the cover. I kind of wish they were. Uh, encapsulated thing where it kept the, the bolts in there. And what do we got in here? A little bit different kind of a filter. I guess it sucks the air in somewhere here. And then through this guy first. And then they give you one of these. Ooh, I like the four, 400 better. It had a uh, Three filters. I had the foamy filter first, and then one of these paper ones, and then one of these. Okay. It's different. This uh, this little guy here should stop quite a bit of crap, though. The paper one actually should be the best. So I want to make sure you get a real good, nice seal on that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it just goes in there like that. I can see this not getting a good seal in here. People that are rushing this, not getting a nice good seal on it. together now. Sounds like a bunch of seagulls. sound right, does it? That ought to do that. 
<coughs> we'll throw these guys back in here too. Oop. So, yeah, like I said earlier, these saws aren't cheap, but I think it's a pretty good investment. It's something that me, I won't really probably use it a whole lot, but one of those things where, you know, I could have gone to rent one of them, but I'm more of a, I need a tool, I need to go buy it within, well, I shouldn't say that because I went and bought a mini excavator too, and that was really expensive, <laughs> but anyway, I kind of like, oh man, is that wrench ever dirty? I kind of like owning my own stuff. What really bothers me is those lending out stuff. Well, that's kind of a different cap, isn't it? It's like adult proof. Push down and twist. Huh. Uh, yeah, I'm not too super crazy about loaning stuff out. It's like, you know, I had to go buy this $2,000 saw. You want to borrow my $2,000 saw? Well, you go buy your own. You know, so. Anyways, let's see here. We got to uh, fire it up. Let's see what we can do. Maybe I'll uh, see if I can get enough light outside. We'll take it outside here and do that. Okay. Sorry, the floor jack handles a bit in your way there. Uh, I've got to figure out the best way for me to do this now. So I'll make sure you're in the shot. You're pretty close there. Um, okay, so. Turn the choke on. We'll give it a couple of primes. They started this at the dealership, so not the fast. Ooh, she's ready to go. Turn that choke off. This little bit of extra here. Let's uh, we'll zoom me in a bit. It's almost like it's idling a little bit too high. I guess I want that clutch wear in a bit too, though, right? It'll probably be fine then. Better get some safety glasses on, you know that? That's probably a good idea. Alright, let's try this out. And dusty, holy crap. I wasn't really ready for that. Uh, <laughs> darn, I don't have much air built up here. I'm not sure if that was exhaust or dust from that thing. You might have to get the water going. Oh, yeah, I don't have enough air to blow this out. Oh, man. Okay. seemed to cut, but it was kind of sparky. Let's try again here. smokes well it's very smoky and dusty probably shouldn't be breathing that crap but it did cut it seemed to cut pretty good nice well i think we might be using a bit of water with that guy for cutting this that's gonna be super dusty so yeah anyways i want to see if you guys can see the fibers see the fibers in there with this stuff in here, you really don't need rebar or mesh. Because this stuff is mixed all in there. Man, I had a lot of comments of, 
oh, I don't see any, any wire mesh or any rebar. I'm like, no, you don't need it for this stuff. This stuff's like probably better. Our, our garage down there, some of you remember in the back where the backhoe sits, they put this in the floor and there's no rebar, nothing in there. And it's been perfectly fine. So, you know, don't worry, it's all good. Oh man, that's pretty dusty. I think we're gonna have to uh, definitely probably uh, use some water. Try to keep the water going onto it. See if I can get the water to come that far. I gotta come all the way from the house, all the way out here. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough hose for that, but anyways, something to mess with. But there we go, sweet. I don't really wanna go in there right now because it's pretty dusty in there. But uh, that seemed to run pretty good anyways. Oh yeah, she's pretty dusty in here. I probably shouldn't be breathing that crap. <laughs> Maybe I'll see if I can. Some air going here. Well, didn't get it all out. It blew a little bit of dust out. But anyways, uh, this also is a wet or dry blade. So in case you start freaking out, oh, you shouldn't use nothing with water. Wet and dry cutting. Just so you know, wet and dry. Wet, wet and dry. <laughs> you can do either way. But I mean, it cuts. But you gotta wonder, like, really, these are pretty smooth. These kind of cutting wheels. But somehow it seems to cut that stuff, and I just don't really know how it does it, but diamonds in there, I guess, cut through that stuff somehow. But uh, there's definitely different compositions. This one kind of feels to me like it's got more diamonds in it. But I think these little segments here are just diamond encrusted and filled with these diamonds, and they get embedded into there, and then they, they weld these, somehow fuse these things onto here so when this starts wearing down it'd be kind of into the metal here and she won't be cutting too well then but uh it's supposed to last for longer this one three times longer life well we'll see once we can get cutting this thing but i think we probably should be using some water the only thing with water is dust is a lot easier to blow out of one of these things than the mucky crap that is going to get made in here and it's going to make a big mess it'd be nice to try it with some water maybe first see what happens but uh and this you only have to really go down i don't know maybe couple inches at the most for depth this is a percentage of how thick the pad is so uh, I'm just gonna go a little bit down and then drive on so 50% taller I guess it's more I don't know this one looks taller looks like more life in it than this one does but this one has different weird things too like that's a different shape and regular 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 different shape again so I don't know but it looks like it does everything, so that's pretty good. But anyways, there she is, the old, uh, new TS-410. Pretty nice little saw here. Kind of was expensive, but, you know, like I say, me, myself, I've been, since I worked at the rental and doing this job, I'm like, you know what, something like that would probably be handy to use for things here and there. You never know, right? So, now we got one. Unfortunately, I paid for it, not them, but, uh, you know, it's the way that works, so. But, uh, all good. So, yeah, it's got nice rubber feet there, too, so when it's sitting on the ground, it's not bouncing all over the place. So, yeah, sweet. Well, we'll have to uh, get some water out here or something and then uh, maybe see, uh, try it dry and see how it's cutting, and then we have to get some water going. We'll get some water going because this is going to be uh, a fair bit of cutting, I think, out here a lot. Cut that fairly quick, but we got a lot of cutting to do here, and hopefully those couple of blades will do it. Kind of dark in here, I know now, but uh, it's all good. But anyways, I guess that's it for today. This stuff here was kind of left over. I'll have to get this stuff moved out of here. Get that broken up again and, and then get this cutting done here. And then we got to get, um, got to get the, uh, try to get the forms off. Kevin there to help us, he's like, um, you used screws on those, didn't you? I'm like, mm, yeah. It's like, hmm, that should be fun getting that apart again. I'm like, I got a backhoe. I'm sure if I stab it in the side here, I'm going to have a problem down there because I actually attach it into the 6 by 6s so that might not come off too nice. The rest of it should be pretty good, but, yeah, where I attached it down here into the building, I wanted it good and solid, so I might have to dig down, down the side of the building here and then saw cut that with something kind of right right there. I might be able to get it cleaned out enough I could just use my chainsaw and then just get most of it off and then bang bang. But uh, this one here might need a... Yeah, it's a little harder that one. 
she might have been pretty dusty out here I don't know I didn't couldn't really see out here but anyways so there we go that's it for today thanks again for watching hopefully you enjoyed showing you that saw and it's just too bad I kind of bartered up that one because that would have worked fine too but same size of blade and about the same horsepower roughly this one's maybe a hair bit more but not much but uh, yeah there we go anyways and this uh, guard of course is you know you can maneuver it around if I had a good hand I'd show you that but I can't really do that so but uh, yeah the water comes in here and I think it shoots up over this thing too and then shoots on the both sides there so it looks like it's a dual water thing so that's kind of cool Anyways, we'll uh, we'll get cutting this soon here. Kevin, I asked him, he's like, when should I cut that? And he's like, oh, uh, sooner than later. <laughs> Don't let it get super, super hard. It's going to be a lot harder to cut that. But yeah, so like I say, we got to do two cuts and then two cuts. So and I got so I just put strings down. I mean, I could have snapped a line like I was saying. I just put a string down. I'm just going to cut like an inch away from that string and then drive on. At least I need to be able to see where your string is, right? It should be, you know, kind of basically... Basically the guard width away kind of thing, right? So we'll get it figured out. But anyways, there we go. If I could get thumbnails up, I would. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you all later, and you guys have a good one. Pretty sweet saw. And I think the the 420 and then the one above that, I think, was a fuel-injected model. I'm like, ooh, that's nice, but no, I don't need something like that. So it was, like, like a lot more money, like $2,500 <laughs> or something. Like, holy smokes. No, I don't need something like that. But anyways, there we go. Thanks again. Catch you all later, and you guys have a good one.